Welcome to the Remote Sensing GIS Laboratory Virtual Utah website. The Virtual Utah website allows you to explore various geospatial or GIS layers such as land cover, hill shades, aerial photography, elevation data, vegetation layers, and a host of other geospatial data. The website can be found at earth.gis.usu.edu forward slash Utah. Looking at the main page, you can see you have several options. You can use the basic viewer, an advanced viewer, or click for a link of places around the state of Utah. In this case, we'll click on the basic viewer to take a look at some of the GIS and geospatial data layers available. Within the Virtual Utah Web Portal, you can see there are several options on the left, right, and across the top. If we start by looking at the top, we can adjust our map size or small or large depending on your screen and your bandwidth availability. If we click on the large tab, you can see that the map is slightly larger and there's a bit more detail available. Similarly, on the right, we have the option of switching between basic and advanced views. If we switch over to advanced, you'll note that we have some other options such as transparency and some swipe tools along the side. The basic settings are very similar to what we'll review here. On the right, you can see a series of data layers. Across the top, you can see the letters T and B. This stands for either top or bottom layer, allowing the user to put two layers up simultaneously and then use transparency to swipe between those layers. A number of different data layers are available in the legend. Earthquakes, Southwest Regional Gap data points, digital plant atlas points, municipal boundaries, names, county boundaries and county names, state boundaries, roads, land ownership, topo maps, aerial photography, and a series of environmental and satellite imagery layers. As you initially scroll through the table of contents, you'll see that there is one layer highlighted. That is the 2011 Landsat Mosaic. If we wish to turn that off and turn on another layer, perhaps we would like to look at some older aerial photography, we can click in our top column and it will update the viewer. On the left we have a series of tools. We can zoom in, zoom out, pan, collect information or attributes about certain points, zoom to a full extent of the state, previous or next extent, also saving URLs and creating PDF maps. If we select our zoom in, and we choose to zoom to a certain location. We highlight and drag a box and we begin to zoom in. For those of you familiar with Google Earth, this may be somewhat similar to what you've seen when you zoom in and out of Google Earth and turn on the historic imagery. In this case, I'm going to turn off the 2011 Landsat mosaic, which is my bottom layer, and turn on the 1997 black and white ortho photos along with the 2003 color aerial imagery and if we swipe back and forth we see a bit of land cover change that's going on due to urban growth. If we turn off our data layers we zoom back to the entire state we'll see that we have some other data available in our environmental data section. In this case we can turn on our biophysical settings from the land fire data set and we can begin to explore what the biophysical layers contain. For instance if we choose to zoom in near Cache Valley we can see that we have a series of colors here, but we're not exactly sure what those colors may mean. If we come back into our table of contents and click on this hyperlink, you'll see that we have an inset biophysical settings land fire legend in which we can scroll through and get the information that we require. Further, if we're interested in one particular area, we can click on the info button and we can click on any specific area and it will query that area for the various data layers that happen to be loaded into the viewer. In this case, it'll query through all the different layers. It'll tell us our elevation, slope, the aspect of that point, the 1990-2000 land cover, the land fire vegetation name, and the land fire group names. Also, it'll describe the land ownership and what county it happens to be in. If you wish to work with the transparency setting, you would load a top and a bottom layer of interest, in this case I will switch from the biophysical settings to a 2006 high resolution ortho photo and on the bottom I will put my 1993 or 97 ortho photos. We'll zoom in a bit further and I can take the transparency tool and begin to swipe back and forth 
to see each layer. So as we swipe to the right, we can see the black and white digital ortho quads. As we swipe back to the left, we can see our top layer, which is the 2006 high resolution ortho photos. Similarly, if we want to take a closer look, and we'd like to look at changes between photos, we can use the swipe tool to swipe back and forth or up and down. We hope that this site will be useful to you and we welcome any input or suggestions for data layers to add.